Yo, 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 what's up? What up? <laughs> so I'm here, I'm here with a really good friend of mine and, um, and actually a really amazing YouTuber as well. Um, they have a, he has a YouTube channel called GLP, That's Gamers right. Little Playground. And what's really cool about this is they don't show their faces on there. <laughs> so no, it's a whole side of YouTube too. It's like the no commentary gameplay section of YouTube. Yes, yeah. it's really interesting. Yeah. And so now I think, and they're very, very, very successful. With you have how many subscribers do you have now? I got 1.98 million, and we should hit two million this month. Uh, ah, yeah. almost two million subscribers and never shown their face. I think it's time to start showing their faces. Uh, <laughs> and showing the world, you know, who they are. But this whole interview that we're actually doing today is about something more, something a lot more closer to me and my journey. And that's the reason why we're gonna. So this yeah. is this is Miguel. Mike. Mike. <laughs> I don't think Mike. Yeah, yeah, Mike is fine. Yeah, yeah. everybody this, calls him Mike. Yeah, yeah <laughs> this is Mike from TLP. Say hello to everyone. Hey guys, good to see you. <laughs> so um, why we're getting together today? This is. Mike has done something amazing. Um, you know about my journey. Mm -hmm. My journey is a transformation journey. Yeah. My journey is about my uh, being a, having an addiction and showing the world, you know, my transformation of how it, what it takes to be in, to go from an addict to go into where I want to make it to the other side um, and being one of the top motivational speakers in the world. Yeah. Um, what Mike has actually done. Mike has actually lost, how much weight have you lost? 250 pounds. 250 pounds. <laughs> I was pounds. huge. I was big. I was 460 pounds. Yeah. The heaviest. Do you think the camera can get a glimpse of you? Oh, like, yeah. you just stand up and show them? Yeah. 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 skinny jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Yo. 250 pounds and so um i hit up my i hit him up a couple of weeks ago and asked yo can i can i interview for this because for me any sort of transformation is a transformation is major and we deal with a lot of the same struggles internally which has stopped us from reaching our our ultimate destination and i just want to you know talk to him about what he had to go through mm. to get to where he is right now so yeah. thank you for taking this time talking to uh, me thank you for having me i appreciate it you know i'm excited about this so, <laughs> we've been there. Oh, i was telling him for so long that he needs to make a youtube channel you need to put your voice out there because you're so infectious and people love talking to you and he was just so I don't know how you got shy on camera. I didn't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Do, I, I do get really shy. And, and, and he's right. Um, him and his cousin. Yeah, Miranda. They, they yeah. were so supportive in me starting mm -hmm. the Glad Life channel. So when the Glad Life first started up, I had these guys pushing me. I mean, they would give me calls. Hey, yo, what's up with your channel? <laughs> Have you done it? Have you started it? And, yeah. you know, one of the reasons I did start it before, but... Um, it wasn't a passion for me because it was more, it, I came across as like, you know, bragging. Yeah, you, know, it was you felt self-conscious about it. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't, wasn't really about what I feel passionate about. Yeah. And so now this channel, as you see, I'm you know, a lot more consistent with you know, getting my videos uploaded and it feels, it's more personal and it is more me. Yeah. Um, it's about putting love and positivity back into the world, so. You know, it's crazy you say that too about the bragging. I think that's one of the things that attracts me to being a no commentary channel anyway. It was just because, I don't know, I'm just self-conscious about being braggadocious or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I know just in general in my journey of losing weight and like with therapy and everything, it's just that line between confidence and overconfidence. Right. And it's just kind of like to be comfortable to be, especially like with, when you're meeting somebody and just not to feel ashamed to be like, I've done this, I've done that. And, and you know, there is that line between being bragging and just being confident. Yeah. So it's like, a, it's a cool thing to explore that as, yeah. as I'm going, you know? <laughs> and I think that that is so true and it's so evident in our society today because you have so many people who want to put their, their story and put themselves out there and yeah. it, it comes, oh, look what I've done, look what I've done. Yeah. But uh, for me, you're right, there is a balance because it's like, look what I've done and just more to inspire people yeah. or look what I've done more around to walk around my chest, yo, I'm the man, I'm yeah. the man. And yo, you know what? 
No one wants to see that. Yeah. No one, because what to me, what that also inspires, it also inspires people to to feel insecure yeah. and self hatred and like, why don't I have a life like that? And we live in we live in a society where people want to live vicariously through others, through yeah. YouTube, through that. And it's like it's so sad because so many people, you you said it, they are. They put this out in front of the camera, but then they go back home yeah. and they suffer just like you and I, yeah. you know, the insecurities, the, mm. the low self-worth mm. just because, you know, I had, I, I had a drug addiction and I, I don't know, was your, would you classify you had a food addiction? Yeah, for sure. I had a sugar addiction okay. and I will forever have a sugar addiction. <laughs> there we yeah. go. <laughs> See? And just because we're, we're honest and we're putting it out there doesn't mean other people don't have those have addictions because there are multiple types of addictions that people actually deal with on a daily basis. Some are more acceptable than others. Yeah. I will actually say to you that, you know, one of the most frowned upon addictions is drug and alcohol. Yeah, yeah. And then the next one would be food. Yeah, yeah, and, but yeah. people don't talk about it. You know, people look at it and they don't think that it's a problem, but it does, yeah. you know. You know, it's crazy too because even with food addiction i i guess it's more it's accepted that like it's a problem and then like people think you're weaker if you have drug addictions mm -hmm. it's just like you don't have to do drugs but you have yeah. to eat but at the same time i always felt even ashamed even just to call food addiction an addiction because mm -hmm. it's just kind of like oh the real addicts are the drug addicts yes. you know you're not an addict just stop eating you yeah know? And, that's, so, and is it and, and let's get into it yeah. was it easy when did you realize that you really wanted to change because i'll be honest with you I was shocked. So, so here's what happened is Mike, Mike kept this so under wraps that he was actually trying to change yeah. until one day he put up a post on Instagram yeah. about look how much weight I lost. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> oh my God, yo, you look dope. Mm. Bro, I didn't know that you were actually looking to do that. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, for me, it was, I'm just such, I've always been a logical person and you know, I knew I was big and people would tell me like, you need to lose weight. And I was just like, whatever, I'll die with pizza in my mouth. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know, like, I don't give a fuck. But then when I started to feel the health effects, then that's when it was one day to the next. So like I started, uh, I got diabetes, but I didn't know I had diabetes. I just started feeling the effects first. So I started seeing spots in my vision. I started, uh, like if my leg would fall asleep, it wouldn't wake up for six hours. Like I would have to, cause the circulation was so bad. I had to, I was peeing maybe like 25, 30 times a day. And then, uh, damn, what else? I had a bunch of like those things. I was like, okay, something's wrong with me, you know? And um, my mom is diabetic. So she has the little, the little machine that takes your, your uh, blood sugar level. Mm -hmm. So I asked her one day, I was like, let me, let me use it. I used it. My blood sugar was at 360 and it's supposed to be on regular humans, it's supposed to be at 80 to 100. Wow. So like anything over 120, you're considered diabetic. Mine was at like 360. Like it was three times the amount. It was off the, it was off the charts. Like, so as soon as that day, when I took my blood sugar, the next day was the last day I drank soda, like regular soda, because I was just, <laughs> I was just pounding soda. Like every morning I would drink a king size green monster. I would eat a king size Hershey's and then I would drink a one liter of Coke. That's just to start the day, just to get the day started. Wow. Like, and then like I could eat a whole full pizza by myself. Just I order Domino's, that'd be like lunch, you know, I was, it was bad, like, it was bad. But I've always been big. Like, my whole life, ever since I was fucking six months old, I've been a fat baby. Like, right. <laughs> so I never knew any different, you know? Right. And it's yeah. really interesting. I love how you said how you're explaining certain um, certain effects that you actually have, okay? Yeah. Like, like, first you said, like, the leg falling yeah. asleep and having to be like that. Just it's like, like, oh, God, wake up, wake up, you know? Because the circulation is just so bad. And that stuff that me not having that issue yeah would never have imagined yeah never thought i just you know we just look and we just think okay you're the big we don't think about the things that you actually have that limit you or make, yeah. make your life uncomfortable it's yeah and that's something that bothers me now with because there's the whole um 
body positivity movement, which I truly believe you should be accepting of yourself, you should love yourself, but at the same time, it's reached a point where it's like dangerous, where where they say like, oh, you can be healthy at any size, and that's just like I've been through it. It's not true. Like you, you can choose to be bigger, and that's your choice, and it doesn't make you ugly or anything. It doesn't make you a horrible person, but you are risking your health. You know, like that you're definitely risking your health. And as somebody who went through all those symptoms, it's like it's not. It's scary. It's because you're at the point where. You know, you're getting closer to death. I mean, right. that's just the truth. So, so when you when you saw three hundred and sixty um, blood sugar, or whatever it is, yeah. I don't know what it's called either. Like sugar level, like you know, your blood sugar level. Yeah. What, what did you feel inside? I felt shame. I felt I felt ashamed because I'm a smart person and I shouldn't have let myself get to that point. You know, and like I said, I've always been big, but at I had gone an extra level. Mm -hmm. Like I, I had always been like the big boy overweight, but I, ha I wasn't like morbidly obese. And at that point I had reached like that massive level of, right. of you know, 460 pounds. Mm -hmm. And people couldn't really tell I was that big cause I'm tall yeah, and like the way right. my weight distributes, but yeah. it's like, yeah, I was, I was big. Like I was really big, you know? Mm -hmm. So I felt shame more than anything. And yeah. then, what what was your next steps after that? The next day, the first thing was to give up soda. Like I just had, I knew it. I had to give up soda because I love soda. I still drink Coke Zero, okay. but it has no sugar. Right. I'm not saying it's healthy, but that was just the that was the Sweet. only way I can. Nah, I can right. Yeah, and I hate Diet Coke and I hate Coke Zero. But then I learned to love it. Like over now, I love it. But right. at those first two weeks, I was like. Just so depressed, I'm like, can't do this. I'd rather die. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, bro, I uh, feel you. I feel you. I started uh, riding my bike. Uh, I had a bike, but I never rode it. But in that time, I could only ride it like a couple blocks, and then I'll just be too too winded, you know. So I could, I would only, I would ride it around my block maybe once or twice, and then I just started doing that. And then slowly going further, and then going like a mile, and then like getting the different, you know, so I just started my process. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm always been, I've been, su I'm super logical, so like once I knew, once I was determined to do it, I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm going to figure this out. Right. You know, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to eat healthier. The biggest step for anybody is to start counting your calories. Right. Once, you, once you can start mm -hmm. doing that. Is done. Then it became a game to me. Okay. You know? And I love games. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Video games. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Like w once you get that My Fitness Pal app, mm -hmm. then then you start seeing like, oh, I can eat this much a day, and then I'll lose this much weight, and then it's just like, oh, okay. And then you see the results, and it's just like. So did you count calories? Yeah. Okay. Just, even now, I'm a human calorie counter now. Okay. Like I know as soon as I see a food, I'm like, oh, that's 450 calories. <laughs> like. <laughs> and wait, what's what what's your what is your target calorie intake today? Well, now, since I want to maintain my weight, I can eat like 2,400, 500 calories a day. Okay. So just mostly because I work, you know, at a desk. Right. So somebody who works like at a supermarket, let's say, is walking around all day, they can eat like 3,800 okay. calories a day and, and not gain weight. Do you know how many calories you were eating in the past? Yeah, I've, roughly I was probably eating like Six thousand calories a day. Wow. Okay, probably, so you know? that's a huge reduction. Yeah. And how did you like? Like you must have. It was been hungry. Yeah, it was. A lot. It, was yeah. it was rough the first couple of weeks, but then like after you get used to it, then you, you know, you start realizing like you eat because you're bored. Yes. You eat because you're because you're used to eating. You know, you eat because you like the taste, but you don't eat because you need to eat. Yeah. You're not hungry. You know. Uh, but yeah, it was it was an adjustment at first, but even more so like because to lose weight, I had to eat like a thousand eight hundred, a thousand right. five. Like you know, now I'm trying to maintain my weight, but when I was trying to lose weight, it was like so beer, like right. cutting, you know. So it it was rough, it was tough, but. <laughs> and when you start to introduce so you started introducing your bike. Did you do other exercises on top of that, or was it just yeah, running? Slowly, like I got a gym membership, and then I started doing car cardio, you know, doing the treadmill. But that was kind of hard because, uh, you know, you're big is bad. That's the other thing with the health. You're big is bad on your joints. Like my knee cracks wow. 
They're like, yeah. they're like, they're like it's never gonna get better. Like all the cartilage is fucking gone. Like I fucked up my knee, um, which is why the bike is so good for me. Okay. But yeah, I started doing cardio and that stuff, and then slowly I started doing weight training, which weight training is the the, the best you can do because that that'll actually make you lose weight faster and in, in, in the long term, like it will be better. But like cardio was, you know, everybody starts with cardio because you think, okay, I want to burn calories. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah. I run. Yeah, um, but like if you really want to lose weight, then do weight training. Okay. For the long term. Yeah, for yeah. the long term. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, my 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 weight, I literally need to lose like. Thirty pounds. Yeah. So you look great. Stop. <laughs> Stop. 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 Yeah, you need, I, I, you I, need I, to lose all this muscle weight. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be cut. Yeah. Um, uh, so you know, one of the things with with my addiction is um, it's an escapism. Yeah. That was my addiction. That was just like I didn't want to have to deal with whatever I was feeling unhappy about in that moment now if i could well you were you were gonna be honest so like what what were you addicted to specifically oh uh, i'm on something yeah i know you i know, I know <laughs> you're gonna be honest so i'm asking uh crystal meth and sex oh okay yeah it's a combination it ain't just one so um both are a no-go areas for me yeah at the moment uh crystal and, meth is rough and i'll be honest because like i we're actually supposed to be we we're supposed to meet up last week and i actually relapsed and oh like, wow! At night, that's why I, when I said to you I had a situation. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was incapacitated. Yeah. I allowed my anger to get the better of me that night uh -huh. before, um, and I spoke with my sponsor about why I, there was like tiredness and anger, and then I just went out and I was like, no, I, you know what? I don't even want to think. Were you angry at life? Were you angry at a person? I was angry at a at a group of people, mm -hmm. um, and hypocrisy mm -hmm. and I allowed myself to transfer that anger into and someone actually put it hit it real with me they said you want an excuse to use yeah and I'm like that's my, my, partially my, true yeah, probably. It, it, exactly I was like you gotta be right because at the end of the day because you said something to me mm -hmm. and you know I listen to a lot of motivational speakers um I I am going to be one I'm one of the great ones as well, yeah. and I do believe that it, there's a light switch that when you switch that light on and when you turn that switch on, that it's like okay, there's no going back for me. Yeah. And I know, and I guess one of the biggest things for you was your health. Yeah, yeah. It was just like you could die. Yeah. yeah. Um. And that's just how I am anyway. Like I'm just 100 percent in. Okay. Like, if I'm gonna be fat, I'm gonna be the fattest person. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm gonna be fit, I'm gonna be, be the fit. I'm gonna be the fittest person. Did you yeah. deal with ever sort of wanting to give up the change? Of oh the yeah, I mean yeah, dude. There's, I mean I, there's so many emotional issues that I've been through and I'm I'm still going through and I'll probably forever go through going through. You know when you're big, people make fun of you growing up. And you, ha and you have to learn how to deal with it. And everything, we have all these childhood traumas that lead us up to the point that we are right now. Mm -hmm. And, like, I had to deal with these issues and face them. I've been running away from all my issues my whole life. And, like, especially even last year, I had, in October, I had, like, an emotional breakdown of just, you know, I'm trying to maintain million subscriber channels. I'm... Um, stress about being the male figure in my family i'm the patriarch and i have been for the past like 15 years my dad was a drug addict he was addicted to crack and he's alcoholic he was in and out of jail and like i you know i didn't even know that you were on meth to be honest and i wish you would have told me because my brother was addicted to crystal meth i don't think i ever told you that you and my brother committed suicide in 2007 which was a major mark in my sister's life, my all my family's life. And it was because he was on crystal meth. He was hearing things. He thought people were watching him in the vents. He thought cameras were in the vents. He, he, he would cover up his whole window because he didn't want anybody to see him, you know? So like, dude, I wish you would have told me. I honestly did not know that, you know? Yeah, that's, and you know, when you're talking about that, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I go through those paranoia of thinking that people are. I actually talk about it, and what's hard for me at the moment that I'm going through, and I don't, I won't mm -hmm. make it about me, right? Yeah, now, is that um, <clears throat> because I'm back 
and I'm in get in alignment with the world, with yeah. the universe. Things happen when you're in alignment. Things just happen, and it's so weird mm -hmm. because I could be thinking of something and it falls into place, and I think that okay, they're they're watching me. They're very, and yeah. that is the uh, I still have to allow all of the 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 math. Um, paranoia yeah. to subside and it takes a while so I always have to tell myself no Cedric and a friend actually told me this yes uh, was the yesterday day before he said I would prefer to be in alignment with the universe than and then in discord with the universe because yeah you know what things happen and it's just like ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. but those are positive things yeah but we as meth addicts look at it at something different like okay government spying on me yeah and it's like that so bro i'm so sorry to yeah no that, that yeah it's crazy and now i'm really curious to know now too because your journey is so similar to my brother's i, I want to know now i'm really curious to know like how you got through all of it because my brother was gay as well and a lot of what he dealt with his emotional issues was mm -hmm. my father rejecting him you know, my, my father beating, trying to beat the gay out of him, like, no. and him him being, you know, trying to be different in a world that wants to normalize you. And he dealt with that his whole life. And I know he turned to drugs for that same reason you're saying is that escapism, you know? You hit everything on there. My, my, <laughs> dad, my dad didn't try to beat the gay out of me, I would yeah. say that. Um, but... Um, I was rejected. Mm -hmm. um, we've had me and my father have had this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, he he's he's accepted me for who I am right now, so which yeah. is good. Um, but I just want to make clear too: my dad did make amends with my brother right. before. He, but you know, the trauma was already. Is it like <laughs> the trauma is there, and yeah. that's something that I'm actually trying to uh, start working with with my therapist. Um, and I literally called my brother last week. Yeah. I was like, yo, I was about to start doing trauma therapy. Yeah. It's going to bring up so much of my childhood. I don't want to have hatred for my parents. I, you know, I love them. And yeah. one thing that I've realized is that even though what we go through and some of the trauma does come from your childhood, does yeah. come from your parents, does come from, you know, could be siblings or your environment. We're all humans trying to make it, so I don't hold judgment to anything that's happened to me in the past. Yeah. Uh, my therapist says it's just I have to learn how to process it yeah. to let it go because that trauma does it does impact us. Yeah. And yeah. yes, you know, it's great that your dad make, made amends. Yeah. And for me, he should have a clear conscience. Yeah. Because he made amends. He, you know, he he approached it and he dealt what he could actually do. Yeah. The rest is down to us to deal with and yeah. to find a way to find an outlet that can help. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. So I I agree with you to a point. I mean, like I have a great relationship with my dad. You know, he always treated me the opposite. Mm -hmm. Like to him, I was his only boy in a way. So okay. like he treated me like the king. You oh. know, um, some of the trauma I felt was kind of the like survivor's guilt right. of watching my brother suffer and me being different, you right. know? But I do agree with you that he should have a clear conscience because he ended up, him and my brother ended up on good terms um, before my brother passed away. But at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, you did do this. So you have to, you can't just make amends once. You have to kind of live, continue, continue yeah. to, to live that way. Yeah, you know? I agree. So, I, I totally agree. Yeah. You know, and it's one of those things where it's just like, you grow up in a... And, and my dad, like, you know, you grew up in the old country, people thought a certain way, so I don't blame you for thinking that way. That's how I am. You know, yeah. at the, at the, I understand, like, you were brought up that way, but at the same time, now you should know different, mm -hmm. you know? You should know that your son didn't choose to be gay. Everybody knew he was gay when he was one year old. That means that, that he was just born that way because it's a natural thing, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not anything to be ashamed of or anything. Is you were just born this way, yeah, you know? I agree. I totally <laughs> agree. I, yo, I'm going through it and I'm learning to accept myself and I'm working, I'm working with God just to learn how to love me and yeah. then God do the rest. 
So it's, yeah. it's like, yeah, so that's, that's trauma. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Your trauma materialized in a different way with your, with food. And yeah. you know, it might not have been escapism, but it was just, I know. think, it, I mean, for me, video games was always my escapism. Uh, um, so you found a positive outlet. Yeah. Well, it could, you know, it could be a negative. Yeah, Any escapism true. could be negative if, if you, if you fall too deep into it. I think for me, it was partly being big. And so I isolated myself. You know, like I was, before we got on camera, I was telling you, like, I didn't really party or anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just crazy how it is because I think I ended up being that way because partly because I'm naturally that way, but partly because my dad was a crazy party, like always on the streets doing stuff. Uh-huh. So you kind of yourself, you you shape your personality yeah. to be counter to that. Cause like, yeah. I don't want to be that. You right. Know? And my brother was also always, he grew up in the early, his time was like the early 90s, so he was in raves. Oh, he was like, <laughs> yes! He was like ecstasy, acid, like, he was just... All, I've done it. Yeah. yeah, he was just, he was doing it, he was having a blast, you uh-huh. know? And like, I just was always kind of like, my personality was shaped to be like counter to that. So I've always been like very centered okay. you know like which is important well i like it that's the thing i love that about myself like it's it's one of those things where some people might find it boring um and that's what i thought people probably would find find me at. so i just kind of isolated myself right. and like i wasn't in relationships i was just it was just that whole self-hatred of just kind of like i'm just a fat gamer and i'm just gonna do my thing and Nobody will ever love me, and like that was my trauma of like not yeah, having. So yeah, yeah. coming out, and yeah. those, those are those are some of the 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 same feelings that we actually have is who's going to love me? Yeah, um, I'm gonna be by myself, and yeah. and um, I and honestly, a lot of times when the crystal meth and the reason why it's crystal meth and sex is because you lose your inhibitions and you don't think about that, and then you're you're kind of getting validation from the sex side yeah it's yeah. like oh now you feel wanted you feel that yeah. oh it feels good that someone wants to do something with me yeah when all the while it's you're self-destructing yeah you know what you're you're going further and further down a rabbit hole that is harder to dig out of and you know i'm thankful that i was able to 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 and I can't even say me. I think it's my spirit. Mm-hmm. My spirit fought against this so much. Yeah. That so you thought it was wrong the whole time, yeah. but you just couldn't. I, a lot of the time, you couldn't fight it. No, I couldn't yeah. fight it. Yeah. It was just like it was like my spirit was just like I don't know why you're doing this. Yeah. I don't know why you're doing this. <laughs> you're just you standing know? in the corner like. Said, said, come on, like, come on, yeah. I actually just, I just did a video last week uh, about what I would tell my five year old self, and that's some of the things that I said was to to listen to your spirit, to listen to that internal gut, because that is, that's what wants the best for you. Yeah. And when you allow that to take over, then you head down that journey to where you're supposed to be. Kind of like a, you know, when you realize that yeah. I don't want to be this person anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be the best version of myself, yeah. you know? I want to be the person I've always wanted to be. Yeah. And I was like, now I was like, I'm going to do it. I got to do it. Yeah. How long did it take you to lose the weight when you got to from that date to... It took me, I would say about four years. Uh, I, it was in 2015. It was in September 2015. And everything fell apart in my life at that time because my channel was taking off. But we got demonetized. We we yeah. just that's right when that's we right. first met. That's how I met you. Yeah. So so my channel at that time probably had like I don't know a hundred and like two hundred thousand subscribers. We're starting to make real money. My cousin had come on to work with me, who you know, Mariana, uh-huh. and he was he was barely at that time like he started finally making money. You know, so we're like, okay, we're gonna do this, and then our channel got demonetized, and back then. When you got demonetized, it was six months you had to wait. <laughs> so, yeah, and my cousin at that time had just got engaged too, uh, or he no, like, well, he hadn't got engaged, but he was with his girlfriend, and it was clear that they're on the path. Like it, yeah. And she was kind of like, "What are you doing?" Like, you know, he was working at a bank before YouTube, so she's just kind of like, "You need to go back to work, a regular job, you know, so we can get our life going." So he was about to quit. I got diabetes and like, but you know, that's the, 
I credit my mom for that because it's just there's just fight like and then that I had that moment of like fight or flight and I just like man I'm already all in I'm gonna go even more all in I'm gonna right. fucking lose this weight and I got a personal loan for eight thousand dollars so I can we can barely survive me and my cousin and I told him don't quit I'm gonna give you half the money and we're gonna launch our second channel GOP TV yeah, I remember that yeah. <laughs> I remember the whole yeah, conversation yeah. about that. Yeah. That's, man, that's when I met Cedric because he was working at Machinima and I was, we were trying to get a new contract. And back then we were at the 60-40 contract. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And like we had made, that was the first month we made like $17,000 on on the main channel and they got like $10,000. <laughs> like, like, no, that's before like, me. Yeah. No, I came in and fixed a lot of those contracts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then like partially, uh, you guys helped us get our demonetization cut by three months. Oh, right, I remember that yes. as well. Yeah, so that was part of the deal. I forgot who, I think, because he was only there for a couple, it was like Chris, I think his name was, who actually was like the head at the time. Oh yeah, Chris Randa. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he helped that. us, yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah, that's when my journey started, and then it up until like 2019 last year, I pretty much had lost the weight last year, and I was just waiting to get my surgery. Yeah. So I got the skin removal on my midsection all the way around mm -hmm. and then on my inner thighs. How how painful was that? I mean like it wasn't like when I woke up, I didn't it still feels a little numb, but it wasn't I didn't feel pain. What felt pain is that I had nerve damage in my leg. Right. And that fucked me up because I couldn't walk for for two months. Right. You know? And then I started doing acupuncture and then like my big toes started wiggling and then slowly now I got feeling in there. <laughs> That's what it's like so when cause like with this I have um, I suffered an artery, and when you have nerve damage, or I, I had a severed nerve, for six months, this these two fingers didn't move. <laughs> and I remember when you first start to see it wiggling, yeah. isn't it so exciting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, ah! We're back, baby! <laughs> yeah. My finger went from the first time, it went like this. Uh, and just seeing that, I was like, I thought, yes, I was used to be married. Yeah. I called my ex-wife, I was like, Tina, Tina, look, look! <laughs> she was so happy, so it was yeah. weird. Yeah, I definitely understand, yeah. bro. I definitely yeah. understand It's that. traumatizing, right? It is. Yeah. It is. It's, and what you appreciate from that is the small things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the small things. I will never again, like, like take for granted being able to walk or just get up or just, uh -huh. just go get a cup of water or something because, wow, God, it was horrible. Like, and see, that's what's really cool about the journey that we actually go through is because we get a new appreciation about life. It's so many things that we take because we, we live in a society now that we have everything at our, and that's what's really bad, instant gratification. We have everything yeah. at our fingertips. We can order our food. We can get it immediately. Yeah. I mean, we could talk to people on the telephone, and we could be at the store and call. And I grew up, we didn't have cell phone. All these things that we want to do right now, and then we complain yeah. when we can't do certain things, and we forget. Yo, yeah. there's so much more that we need to be thankful about. It's just, that's just such a minor thing. Yeah. You know, my therapist uh, brings that up a lot of just like, it's like a practice we go through. It's just like, what are you grateful for today? You know? Like, <laughs> I sent out, mm. and I'll, I'll read it. Um, I sent out every day, um, and this is something that uh, you get in AA, is um, a gratitude list. And mm. today I sent out, I'm grateful to be clean and sober day seven. I'm grateful for being able to be of service for a friend who needs help getting back on their feet. I'm grateful for learning to check my ego. It's not always about me. Yeah. I'm grateful for laughing so much last night while doing Instacart with Chris. I'm grateful for having amazing friends who check in on me consistently. I'm grateful for, be for being in alignment with the universe. I'm grateful for God never giving up on me. I'm grateful for cloudy mornings and yeah. sunny, sunny afternoons. That's what we're getting right now here. Yeah. And I'm grateful for the, the beautiful moon last night. I don't know if you saw that. I did see it. It was gorgeous. But yeah. yeah, I do that because it helps us remind us that there's so many things that we need to be thankful for. Yeah, yeah. And I think especially like you were just saying, like in the time that we're living in, when you can just communicate with somebody instantly, mm -hmm. you need to be grateful for that shit. Yeah. You know? It's so much. It's mm -hmm. like... So now that you, um, you've lost the weight, 
And <laughs> how do you feel? How did it feel when you finally saw the new mic? I felt a great satisfaction. I, I did feel really... I don't know, because it is such a progressive journey. You kind of don't see yourself losing the weight until you maybe look at some old pictures. But yeah, the best thing for me has been like gaining confidence um, in social situations. I was always, I'm just like terribly shy, like super, super shy. And I never knew that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just, I've been like, I have supreme, I've always had supreme confidence in my intelligence. Mm -hmm. So like in school, I was always, I could like be in class and like fucking lecture the class if I wanted to, you know. When I was a, I was a teacher before I did YouTube, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Um, I worked in education, worked with kids, teaching, mentoring, tutoring, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, like in then school setting, I was always like, I was larger than life. And I was never able to transfer that confidence okay. to my personal life. Right. Like, because like, again, it was a self-hatred. It's just like I, I would uh, talk to a girl and I would just convince myself that she wouldn't like me. Right. And like, um, I that's all my regrets too, because... I literally probably when I was like 26, I had like a freight train hit me where I realized, I look back in my life and I realized like, oh my God, this person liked me, this person liked me, this person liked me. Mm. And she was sending me all the signals and I just, <laughs> I was just blind to it. And even though I was big, yeah, and even like they liked me even though I was big and they just liked me for who I was, probably because I showed that confidence mm. in my intelligence, but I just couldn't believe it, you know? So now it's, that's the great like difference now is where I'm able to see it right away and I'm able to believe it right away because I'm just like, yeah, of course they fucking like me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you better fucking like me. Like, <laughs> look how handsome I am. <laughs> Confidence. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I yeah. love that. I love so that. it is, that's, that's the greatest feeling because it's like, Especially, I've been deprived of it for 30 years, you know? I didn't, I didn't feel any of that shit. Never. I never felt it, so... Right. You know? And that's where, like I was saying, that's where all my trauma comes from. It's just kind of that isolating myself and... But, at the same time, I am grateful for it because it's allowed me to accomplish great things in my life, so... Mm -hmm. And I, I can uh, harness all that pain and anger and energy into whatever I do, you right. know? Okay, so, so you refocus, you reach yeah, out your energy. Yeah. You touched on something which I think is really important, and it's for both of our communities because I know that I was raised in an era that uh, we don't do therapy. Yeah. We don't we don't go see someone to oh, talk yeah. about our feelings and stuff yeah. like that. You mentioned that you go to therapy. Yeah. How much has that helped you? Uh it's been oh, it's been mine, man. I love my therapist. Shout out to <laughs> Karina Sergi. <laughs> She's the best. Um, I started in, well, actually, you know, I did do therapy one time in high school. It was like a school mandated thing because it was, it was, I was in high school when 9-11 happened. Oh, so, ooh, yeah. wow. <laughs> yeah, and back in 2001. So it was like I did then, and it was, it was a little helpful then, but it was more just kind of like a general, like, oh, we'll see how everybody's doing type right. of thing. Um, but it was good, and then, uh, yeah, it's been monumental. And you're right, even now, like, I tell my mom about it, mm -hmm. and and my mom's a little kind of like, don't tell her about it. Like, yeah. like, because I'm always yeah. worried. Yeah. And people like that, you know, I, I had a, a chat with my dad, and I was, you know, it was last week, and it, it was a really great talk, but sometimes he gets out and say, oh, you know what? I am watching this and I'm learning this and he tries to take back well I taught you that yeah so people take things so personal and it's like yeah it's not about you yeah. <laughs> this is like we're really trying to work on me and then this is what I need <laughs> to help myself so. does your dad ever say like what did what did the therapist say about me when no you I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't they actually um I, it has been suggested to if I want you to do a family therapy session. Oh, God. You, you'll never drag your parents to that. No, uh, no, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't. And, and maybe because, you know what? Um, I also watched my father uh, turn his life around. Okay. I watched my father be a, a you know, he was a pretty bad alcoholic. Uh -huh. And, um, but I watched him 
turn his life around. I think I was thir- 13, and my father hasn't been drunk in 30-something years. Ooh, and he yeah. became the man that he is today, and I love him for it. So I witnessed that. So sometimes I know, I guess from my father's perspective, he was able to turn his life around. He was able to do certain things. Yeah. And so he's like, you're a product of me. Yeah. You should be able to do this. But, yeah. you know, my journey, that's not my journey. It's, it's all different. Yeah. yeah. It, we're all different yeah. and that's where it takes where and that's why I put in there about me checking my ego because <clears throat> the ego will, will make you up well how come you should be able to or you want to compare no yeah. check your ego this don't always make things about yourself you yeah. know what you are you you're going through your journey he is him he's going through his journey let it be learn yeah. or give support and that's yeah. that, that's really it you know what they say? Comparison is a thief of joy. It really is. <laughs> That's yeah. what, you know, I think, you know, we have this, you know, YouTube and everyone wants to, to see and they want to be like people. And I always, I'm quick to tell people about going through my journey. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Yeah. I'm trying to share what's working for me. You take what you want and apply it. If it works for you, it does. If it, if it doesn't yeah. and you find something different, yeah. so that, that's great. All it is is just to show you what's what's happening. And that's what this conversation is. Yeah. And for me, it's also tying in that, like we said at the beginning, addiction is addiction. Yeah. We all have it. We all use have different forms of ex- escapism, and it's understanding that and finding out to find a healthy balance about escapism and learning to deal with your issues. Yeah, yeah. Because like you, I ran. I yeah. I was a runner. I yeah. and you know what? My running, my running is even worse because <laughs> I have dual nationality. Uh-huh. When I fuck my life up in England, <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm out of here. I'm moving back to the U.S. You're, oh, you're literally running. <laughs> Yeah. I come over to the U.S. and I was doing that for a while. Yeah. I would bounce back and forth. I would come back and stay for two years. Oh, I don't like it here now. I'm yeah. going back to England. And I'll go back over there. So yeah. it's a trait that once you learn to face your problems, then you stop running and you learn how to deal with things head on. Yeah. And it seems like you've actually done that. Yeah. I, I uh, For me, it's always been the emotional, like just tune it out and like pretend it's not there. Mm-hmm. And I would go through bouts of depression over the years of kind of, like, especially like in the beginning years of YouTube, because I mean, I was grinding 14, 16 hours a day, just wow. cause I was just determined that I had to be successful. Like nothing was gonna stop me, but at the same time, there was no mental like self check, nothing. No. Mm-hmm. So then as the years go by and as we get more successful, those bouts of depression would happen more often you know i just feel just kind of like man i'm fucking lonely like you know i want to find this right girl like i need to i don't want to be like obsessed with work all the fucking time but i do because i want to be so successful and it's just and like i said in october i had a kind of emotional like i called the therapist to set up the and i started crying leaving a message just wow. like i was just just telling her like i just like i don't know what's wrong with me like i feel i I just feel so lonely even though i'm trying to find someone and like and and you know but i I did like she opened my eye and this just happened actually like three weeks ago where we she presented it in this way of you know you're you're running away from this demon but you need a like what do you want to do and i was like i want to defeat the demon i want to turn around and fuck this demon up you know <laughs> and then she told me she told me she's like no you're not supposed to you're, you're not supposed to slay the dragon you know that's your video game yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 she's like you're supposed she, she told me you're supposed to befriend your demon mm. and i was like what like no stupid bitch like like like, like, like. <laughs> but I started thinking about that throughout the week and then I realized and it's an obvious thing I mean it's an obvious thing but once it came to me it it fucking changed my perspective because the whole thing was the demon I'm running away from is the nine-year-old version of me who just wants attention and he's desperately chasing after me he's desperately trying to tell me to stop and then when and I talked about it with her and she's just like Exactly, like you're exactly right. Like, what do you so? What do you want to do? Is just like I need to stop 
turn around. Like, what would you do if it was another nine-year-old to just stop and see what he needs? Like, tend to his needs. Because he never got any attention growing up. He suffered all that trauma. So you need to heal him in order to heal yourself because he's part of who you are. And that's what I figured out was just kind of like, if I don't turn around and tend to the needs of this nine-year-old, his emotional needs, then I'm going to lose that part of myself forever. And I'm just going to become bitter, fucking angry, and, you know, and I need to take care of that person, you know? Like, so that was, that was a real eye-opener for me. That's what therapy is fucking amazing. <laughs> like, I love therapy. how you put that because it ties into what I said to you about the video I did last week. Uh -huh. But then also, my therapist said something like that yeah, as well yeah. last week. Yeah, so when I had got triggered and I, what I did was I sat and I I actually talked to my five-year-old self mm. and I said, okay, listen, I love you. Yeah. And I was like, it's okay to be scared. Yeah. Just know that I'm not going to go anywhere and I love you yeah. and I want to hug you. And, and it's attending to the child inside of us mm. because you're right. That is where all of this has started. Yeah. That's that didn't get the the attention that we wanted at that age that we have become so petrified yeah. inside that we need to attend to it. Yeah, we need to. Otherwise, fuck, dude. <laughs> like, yes. And it, it's funny because like people, you what you just said, just like oh, I talked to my five year old self. Most people hear that and it sounds so like hokey and just like, okay, whatever. Like, you know, that's like, the th but the truth is like, you know, you only get out of therapy what you put in. Yeah. So like if, if you're not willing to do that type of stuff, then, then yeah, you're not going to get anything out of it. You know, you're just going to, it's just going to be worthless for you, but you got to be willing to kind of put yourself in an uncomfortable situation of just... But I think Sorry, that's, yeah. that's life. That's yeah. everything that we actually do. You have to go in with with an open mind, with true intentions, and to and be prepared to put the effort and work in. Yeah. Because if you go in there and not really wanting to do it, and I think part of that was like with my addiction, maybe I wasn't ready to give it up yet. Maybe yeah. that's part of the reason because I had it fully committed. Because that's it. Once you make that full commitment, yeah. then you're in. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to yeah. do this, so. I wonder, though, because, you know, I never even, like, well, you were a functioning fucking addict, like, because, yeah, and especially with, because everybody I've ever known who's done crystal meth, they fall off the fucking cliff, like, fast, yeah. you know? I don't know how you were able to... Like, uh, <laughs> like, I wasn't, I wasn't, um... I don't how know. long, how long did you do it, can I ask? Yeah, yeah. um... Really started getting. I mean, the first time I tried it was in two thousand and uh, two thousand and eight. About two thousand and nine. Okay. Um, and like at a party or something, or somebody introduced you to it. Yeah, I tell you, it's a sex thing. Yeah. So okay. you know, okay. you're you gonna have sex all night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we wanted to do, and that's yeah. what we did. Yeah. Um, and then so when I moved to California, kind of messed around with it in the beginning. One thing about me is once I get into a relationship, I'm all in. And that's when I met my first partner in L.A. So I gave it up. Yeah. I didn't do anything. I had little bouts of slipping here and there when I was unhappy. Mm -hmm. But then when we split up in 2014, mm -hmm. that is, and that's like where I've been trying to get away from it. 2014, I went in in March. Mm -hmm. uh, I did it every day for like from when we split up in March to about September. I did it for every day. And I... I actually got diagnosed with um, paranoid schizophrenia Okay. Um, at one point because that's what the drug does to you. It yeah. makes you hear things. And um, I was pissed. I remember being pissed and like, yo, how come, uh -huh. why am I getting diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia? I know people who have done this for so long and they're fine. Yeah. Why me? Yeah. And um, so ever since then, I stop doing it becoming an everyday user and maybe yeah. that that's one of the reasons why yeah. i stopped becoming an everyday user and i've always battled with it so i'll go through spates spates so you know, i might do a, a few days so i might do it like you know two or three days or yeah. might be at the weekend but it's because i always go back to it i yeah. always go back to it and now i'm at that same even when i just do it just like my relapse is like literally for a few hours mm. and then the self-hatred comes in. i was like why did you do this you know this is not what you want you know you're going to be unhappy 
you are now going to have to deal with all these consequences and I shut down. Yeah. I shut down. I don't want to talk to people, but I use that time to reflect. I use that time. Okay, what can you learn? And what I learned from it on, on my last relapse was that um, I haven't committed to God enough yet. Mm. Um, you know what? That's one thing for me. My spiritual side is like the biggest part of me and it's really trying to connect with God. Yeah. And like I I'm God fearing, but I wasn't scared of God but, and you know, of his wrath. And yeah. I think I that came out of it. I'm doing more Bible studies right now and okay. it's like I'm trying not to lose who I know who I am because yeah. I know that also the Bible, you know, it it made me hate myself because of what what yeah. I was led to believe. So I'm trying to find that balance now. And I have faith in God that God is going to help guide me. God is going to get me in that direction. God is going to open my spirit up. And I'm going to have so much love yeah. um, and be so connected with him that, you know what? My life will turn out exactly how it's supposed to turn out. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm fortunate. And that's why I've also realized that God has a plan for me because you're right. People mm -hmm. do fall off. People, they die. They commit suicide. They yeah. go crazy. There's so many negative aspects of doing this drug, but I pull through. Yeah. I have pulled through. And no, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, as like, I saw my brother, so I'm like surprised how, because I never knew, you yeah. know? No. I, I remember you telling me about the sex, but you yeah. didn't tell me uh, about the meth before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it was a bit, and I was, you know, I've been forced, I've been blessed that so many people care about me that have really helped me and been, uh, Scott? Mm -hmm. Scott was mm -hmm. in my corner to help me. Warner Brothers, mm -hmm. Warner Brothers tried to help me so much. Yeah. I remember, oh my God, uh, one of the, the parties I had to organize up at PAX West, I went missing for, um, I went missing for four days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they had to file a missing persons report on me. You're on a bender? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so when I, when I, when I take that drug, and it was even worse because like, how can I face people? Yeah. So then my anxiety kicks in. My anxiety is like, oh my God, you can't face people. What's wrong with you, Cedric? You're a loser. Oh my God, your, your job. No, so then I just hide. Yeah. Um, so long story short, I, I went to rehab. That was when I, in 2017. That's the last time I went to like an inpatient. The only time really I went to an inpatient rehab. And took that time off of work. Um, got better. And I did. I, you know, I got a, probably the longest time I've been clean, like six, six months. I got like six, seven months clean time. Yeah. Um, but it was E3 coming up. And I remember... Uh, I was at Scott's office, and then all of a sudden, uh, Scott and I walk into uh, the uh, vice president of human resources. I'm like, what's going on? Why is it? And Scott's trying to make small talk. You know yeah, Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to make small talk with me. And I'm like, shut up. Why am I going to me in my mind? Uh, Dude, I go into the office. They sat me down. They're like, listen, Cedric. E3 is here. You know, we have your party coming up. We want to make sure that you're okay. Damn. We want to make sure that you don't get triggered, that you know you have enough support here, that we want you to be okay. So we'll know if it's are you getting overwhelmed and I would have broke down crying with that type of support. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's like I sat that I was so touched. Mm. Hats off to Warner Brothers, because I will tell you, before the AT&T merged, for me, Warner Brothers was all about people. Yeah. All oh, they always put people first. And to have that love and support, many people don't get that. Yeah, that's, they, they I mean, that's rare. Yeah, that is it is rare. very, very And rare. I always, and I did always, I mean, I didn't know the inner workings, but I always loved Machinima. Yeah. Um, because it felt like a family. It yeah. always, for good or bad, like, because there was bad times, but it's it always felt like a family. I don't know. Yeah. The loyalty that the, the, the fans and the, oh, yeah. the, the YouTubers, they actually had for machinima is it's unreal sometimes when i rock the the machinima the machinima shirt yeah do you know how many people come out and they're like oh, oh that's that's what red versus blue yeah. and, and i didn't know anything about any of this stuff. yeah yeah i don't know I didn't know anything you about came it. in a couple years after yeah. Yeah. yeah and then so to see the afterwards of like of of people still they have that camaraderie about machine we're still a family we still you know we still talk i still talk to scott and i still talk to aaron and um i see like constant and i, I talked to alan we, we were doing we did a um 
a uh, a Zoom game. Okay. Yeah, we got oh, some yeah. other stuff. So Dude, we I still love Alan. Like, uh, Alan's the best. <laughs> Alan. yeah. So it's like you know having that type of love and support really really helped me. Yeah. It helped me not lose myself completely. So I I not thinking that I'm all super special, super important, but I just had something that and I call it God yeah that helped me throughout this entire journey to help get me to where I'm heading towards right now and where I know I'm gonna make it I, I have no confidence I have no worry that I'm not going to get there yeah I'm just impatient yeah you just want to get there now <laughs> yeah. I'm like dude can, can we just like can we forward the clock yeah kind of like oh click Click? Okay. Did, did you yeah, see that? Yeah, 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 right, I want right. to go like, okay, pause, pause, okay, let me pause. <laughs> like I, and then I'm there, but you miss out on life. Yeah. And that's the most important part is the journey. So that's what I'm learning right now. No, it is. I mean, I I look back on my journey, both YouTube and and like the losing weight, and it is like you get the satisfaction of knowing like, oh, I used to ride like 15 miles, you know, mm. or, or I would grind for fucking 14 hours straight when nobody else would, you know, so it is, that's the stuff that it's like in your heart, that's the stuff that you remember and you, right. you feel proud of, you know. What words of wisdom would you give to anyone that is in a struggle today that's trying to, to get to the best version, but they find it hard? I, I would say it's just that, like you're saying, of you just want to get to the end. I think that's where most people mess up. And it's just, you got to have patience. For no matter what it is, you just got to, whatever. I know some people are impatient. You got to learn the patience because anything that's worth doing takes time. And that's just all it comes down to. And it just you just can't lose confidence in what you're doing or in yourself that you have to just know that it takes time and you have to just enjoy the journey right. and if you're not enjoying the journey then you're on the wrong journey yeah you know? oh that's true <laughs> that's true yeah. uh, we have learned to enjoy it now i've just uh, so i listen to you when i was in my car over here and i tear my music off and i just took my time to talk to god and just mm. the thing and i says you know what <sighs> I'm happy. I'm actually learning to just enjoy it, enjoy where I am, because I'm also seeing how he's throwing in, and my my I'm actually going forward. Yeah. So I'm like, just yeah. chill, Cedric. There's a little side steps yeah. here. I'm like, hey, we're still going. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, any any last. Any last words you want to get? No, I'm just really happy that we got to talk finally. Yes, and, we um, talked. To, we yeah. talked about this. I think when you were at the at yeah. the we were at a restaurant. We're like hot wings or big wings. Yeah, 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 big wings. We said wings. we actually wanted to talk. Yeah. We talked about your, how's your sports team doing? Oh yeah, we have an esports team. They're doing amazing. We have uh, the best Call of Duty Challengers team on the planet. Next week is COD Champs. Which we hope to win two hundred thousand dollars on the line. What's the name of your channel? What's the name? Of your oh, team? it's official team. It's team war, but it's official team war. So official team war. Yeah. Okay. Where yeah. can they follow you? Where can they follow you at? And where can they follow your um? Yeah. Your, your 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 team. So the team you can follow at Twitter dot com slash official team war and Instagram dot com slash official okay. team war. Uh huh. And you can follow me at Instagram dot com slash. Uh, Big Mike, Little Mikey. Okay. <laughs> Big Mike, Little Mikey. See, yeah. that's why I kept wanting to call you Mikey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's all my. It's because all my cousins call me. I was the youngest for a long time, so I was like the baby in the family. So uh, everybody's like Mikey, Mikey. Uh, uh, you know, Little Big Mikey. <laughs> so thank you for taking this time. This is Mike from GLP Gamers Little Playground. Taking this time to share these words of wisdom for you. Yeah. Really appreciate it, bro. All right, man. All right. Uh,